All right, we left off with um, Heisenberg and Schrodinger describing the idea that we couldn't really pinpoint the exact location of the electron. We can kind of see their movement, and we can kind of associate it with different energies. Um, the idea of electron configuration kind of picks up where that one leaves off. And the idea of an electron configuration is that it identifies the exact location of each electron that goes into an atom. And remember, with an atom, we're talking about electrically neutral things here. So the more electrons we add, thus more protons, thus the changing of the element. So there's three rules that actually dictate the, the location or the locating and placing of the electrons into their correct address, if you will. The first one's called the off ball principle. And the off ball principle states that an electron will always take the lowest energy level first, or the lowest energy orbital first. It also states that all orbitals within one sublevel will have the same energy to each other. Now, what this means here is that electrons will stay close to home when possible. So if you want to think about the nucleus as being the home, the lowest energy or the ground state is going to be located as close to the nucleus as possible. As you move further and further away from the nucleus, you can hold more electrons, but it requires more energy on behalf of the atom. We'll come back to this in a moment. The key concept here is that you start at the top of the diagrams and you work your way down. And it becomes a reloading process. Um, this diagram over here on the left actually best shows that. Um, personally, I prefer a linear list of these and I simply go through and write out 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, so forth and so on. We'll, we'll get into all of that though when we go to the practice section. The second rule though is called the Pauli exclusion principle. and It states that orbitals can hold at maximum two electrons. But those electrons, because they both carry the same charge, must be, must be spinning in opposite directions. One going clockwise, the other going counterclockwise. The third rule is Hund's rule, and it says that electrons will spread out across the sublevel before they pair up. I like to create an analogy of uh, maybe a five-bedroom house, I'm sorry, a five-family or a five-member family moving into a um, three-bedroom house. Uh, the parents will automatically take one room, leaving you with uh, two bedrooms for four siblings. Uh, initially, you'll spread out across those rooms until there's no more rooms for the siblings and then the siblings will be forced to pair up. We'll talk again more about that one in class as well. Now, it's important to note that there's a specific way that we write these things. And when we start to put the address in, there's three major components. First and foremost, we have the coefficient. And the coefficient corresponds to the energy level. Now, again, the energy level has to do with how far away from the nucleus we're talking about. The lower numbers are closer to the nucleus. The higher numbers are associated with higher energies and are much further away. The second component that we have is the letter. The letter, this is the shape of the orbital. As we discussed in our previous lesson, there are different shapes depending on different movement of the electrons, and that corresponds to their wave functions. The third and final component is the exponent, and the exponent is the number of electrons in that particular energy level and orbital. Let's go ahead and do an example of one electron configuration. We'll start out with the example for carbon. Carbon has six electrons and we need to find a location for each of these six. The lowest energy level is the 1s. Now any any particular orbital may hold two electrons and that's the maximum that we can hold. So we're going to place two electrons into that s orbital and in the 1s there's only one type of orbital. Now s there's only one type, p there are three types in the sublevel, d there are five, and f there are seven. Which means that each corresponding sublevel, if you factor in Pauli's exclusion, can hold 2 in the S, 6 in the P, 10 in the D, or 14 in the F. So to continue working with our electron configuration, we've placed the maximum number 
in our 1s. After the 1s, according to Aufbau, the next lowest energy is the 2s. Because we're still talking about an s orbital, we're still talking about a maximum of 2. So we're going to place those two electrons in. So far, we've used 2 plus 2 for 4 of our 6 being placed. But we can no longer place any more into our s orbital. The next one we have energy-wise, according to our diagram below, is the 2p. The 2p can hold a maximum of 6 electrons because there are three different types of p orbital that make up that sublevel. But we only have to place two more because we only have 6 total. When I add up the exponents, I should always get the atomic number of what we're looking at. 6 is the atomic number of carbon, therefore this is the correct electron configuration for carbon. Another example right here denotes potassium. Potassium has 19 electrons. Again, we're always going to start with the lowest energy level, and that's the 1s. We can place two electrons into any s orbital, reducing our total to 17. Next up is the 2s. Again, because it's an s, we can only hold two there reducing our total to 15. Next follows the 2p. The 2p can hold a maximum of 6 electrons. We have enough room in there, we have enough electrons to place, so we place all 6 in there, reducing our total to 9. After the 2p, according to the diagram over here, comes the 3s. Again, because we're talking about an s, we're talking about only being able to house 2 electrons. Take that off of our total, we're left with 7 remaining. Next comes the 3p. The 3p can hold a maximum of 6. So we place those 6 in there, leaving us with one more. After the 3p, the arrow points to the 4s. 4s, like any s, can hold a maximum of 2. Of course, we only have one more remaining, so we'll place that one in there, and we're all set. Another way to think about electron configuration is kind of like the idea of a carpool. If you have 10 players that need to get to the game, only a few of them will be able to fit in the first car. Say two, it's a sports car. So two fit in the first car, you have eight more to place. You place them in the corresponding cars until all the players are being delivered to the game. Now in all likelihood what's going to happen is your first several cars packed up are going to be completely full. Like each orbital here. Eventually you're going to get to that last car. And though it can hold more electrons in this case, more, more players, we don't have any more to take to the game, so we're going to have a partially empty orbital as our final orbital. This is a very brief overview of electron configurations, and it's really just about placing them in the right spot. We will go into much more depth and a lot more practice in class.